Hi there, I have another video on the internet where um, I do this where we have a three-sided fence and uh, you know there's a river, whoops I'm trying to draw that there, there's a river, here's the blue water and we have a fence, I'll draw it in green, it's a rectangular fence, there we go there we go, it's a rectangular fence and there's only three sides to the fence because it's it's got a river on one side so the animals don't want to get drowned in the in the water and what I do is I go through the question using a bunch of different options for the way this fence could be in order to make the maximum possible area okay and it's a situation where you're given a certain amount of fence and you have to come up with the maximum area that would fit inside here and you do it by trial and error and that video is fairly popular, I noticed. It's like 19,000 views. But this one here, I want to show how to do this question using quadratics, because that's the videos I've been doing lately are more on quadratics. And so we're going to come up with a quadratic equation that comes up with the maximum area of this rectangle. So first of all, when you're finding the area of a rectangle, you, you know that you just go, you know, the length, sorry, that's not the length there, the length being the long side, the length times the width, okay? So that is something that we know. The length times the width will will equal the area of a rectangular area, right? Okay, and in this case, let's read the question. So we're given a certain perimeter, and we have a three-sided fence, and a rectangular lot is bounded on one side by a river, there it is, and on the other three sides by 80 meters of fencing. So the total amount of fencing is 80. And if we were to write like the perimeter of this thing, of this fencing, I think you would agree with me there's two widths right here. Okay, so two W. There's two of these. And there's only one length. So in order for us to do the perimeter of this fence, or the 80 meters that they've given us, we could say um, 2 times W, there it is, plus the length. If we were to do 2 times W plus the length, that would give us 80, because 80 is what we are given here. Now, so far, this doesn't really look quadratic at all, does it? It doesn't look like something that would make a parabola, which is what we call a quadratic, and we're going we're gonna to try and make that situation here. One way we can do this is to get L, see this L right here? Solve for L and then substitute it into this equation up here. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to get rid of this 2w, bring it over to the other side using algebra. So we're going to subtract 2w from this side. We have to do the same thing to both sides. So it's like saying 80 minus 2w. All I did is rearrange this so that it looked like this. Then, let me draw more arrows for you just to keep it real simple. We're going to take what 80 minus 2w, we're going to take and substitute it into this equation right here where the L is. So instead of L, we're going to write 80 minus 2w. So length times width is equal to the area we're looking for. We're looking for the maximum area. And instead of L, I'm going to write um, 80 minus 2w. I'm going to put it in brackets because we're multiplying that by this w here. We can't forget about it. And that will equal the maximum area. Okay, the maximum area we're looking for. And let's extend the page. So here we have it. This is starting to look like a quadratic. Now, if we wanted to, there's a few different ways we could do this right now. Um, we could multiply this all out. And if we multiplied it all out, we would have a quadratic equation in standard form. And then we could use different techniques like completing the square, or another video I have on how not to use completing the square, where we use negative b over 2a, and we're able to come up with the what we call the vertex, okay? Which would be how we find the maximum area. That would all be fine and dandy, but probably the quickest way to do this kind of question is to come up with what are the zeros 
of this parabola? What are the zeros of this quadratic equation right here? And if we come up with the zeros, let's do that first of all. And I, I, if you are completely confused about what I'm talking about, you should check out the video that I have on how to find uh, the vertex given the zeros of a quadratic equation, because that goes over a number of examples like this, so that it doesn't just confuse you what I'm doing right now. Okay, zeros mean, uh, if we had a parabola, where are the spots if the parabola opens up or down? Where are the spots where the parabola cuts through the x-axis? And it could be opening downward as well. We don't know in this situation. Um, probably it's opening downwards because we're looking for the maximum spot. So it's going to be a parabola opening downwards. But what we're going to do here is find the two zeros. So the two zeros are w. If w were 0, if w were 0, that would make all of this become 0. W, 0 times anything is just 0. So one of the zeros is 0. The other 0 that we're looking for, the other x-intercept, is we would use this equation right here. So I'll just do it off to the side. 80 minus 2w equals 0. So let's bring the 2w over to the other side. So 80 equals 2w. I just added 2w to both sides. And the last step is divide both sides by 2. So w equals 40. So we now know that this w, in order for this to become 0, this would be 40, and the other 0, zero would be 0. Okay, so we have a parabola. Let me get rid of this parabola. So what we're going to look for here, I'll draw a quick parabola. The two zeros are at 0 and at 40. We know it's a parabola that's going to open upside down because we're looking for a maximum. And this parabola has a maximum. The maximum being this spot right here, the vertex. And the vertex happens if we look at the number between 0 and 40, what number would be right here? Because that would be the x value of this vertex. Well, 0 plus 40 is 40, and if we divide by 2, you can agree with me or not, the middle between 0 and 40 is 20. So here would be the x value, or in this case we're calling it the w, and the w, or the width. So the width is 20. We now know that the ultimate width here is 20. What would the length be then? You can use our formula up here if you like. Um, if we want to find the length, let's use this right here. If we want to know the length, all we do is take 80 minus 2 w. Well, we found w to be 20. w is 20. So you just sub that in there. It's like saying 80 minus 2 times 20. 80 minus 40. 80 minus 40 is 40. So we now know that the length of this fence should be 40 to get the maximum possible area, and the width should be 20. And we did this on my other video using trial and error, but here we used quadratics to find the exact same result, okay? And it took me a while to explain it, but really it can be done very quickly if you um, do it without me talking. So 20 and 40, and uh, there is our maximum possible area given three sides, okay? And quadratics can be used for many kinds of questions that have to do with maximums and minimums as well. And in this case, we just used it for the three-sided fence situation. I hope that didn't confuse you too much, and I totally recommend watching the other videos I was mentioning as I was talking, so that this doesn't confuse you so much, because that is not my goal. I would like to make you happy with your math course. Anyway, have a good day, everyone.